Hello, ladies and gentlemen, to a very special uh, month of Trailer Park episodes, all about Star Trek. It was Kenny's idea. She was she was the one that came up with it, apparently. Um, so I'm joined again by Kenny and Chris. Oh, hi. But I'm also joined by two special guests who are, uh, I have been told, Star Trek nerds, or at least people who are very knowledgeable about this around the areas of the Star's Trek. Uh, Art and Mitch. Hi. Hi. For Star Trek Timber, we're going to have a look at uh, the Star Trek trailers, but not the original, but not, not the current ones, the ones with the pine and the boring. Uh, we are going to be going all the way back to the beginning, to back to 1979, all the way up until now. It's a month worth of episodes, so we've got a lot of stuff to get through. Uh, the first trailer that we are going to talk about is the Star Trek The Motion Picture, the first one, all the way back when Star Trek got pulled off TV. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, back when CBS decided to put a little bit more money in and a bit more trust in Roddenberry, uh, which kind of paid off. Uh, although... Did it? Did it really? <laughs> Yeah, well, it, well it, it kind of paid off for the rest of the Star Trek franchise because it's still going now these days. That's kind true. Of a, a mutated version of what it once was, but eh, it's still going. Um, but the one thing that I certainly noticed with the trailer is that it's very much beginning. It's very much an introduction to people to uh, Star Trek as a story, as a plot. Would people actually think that? Um... I don't know. I I kind of it kind of lost me about halfway through. It was a little bit long, and it went on about the human adventure, and then suddenly there were cool lightning bolts in the front of the ship, and we don't even know what those are. But supposedly it's a human adventure. <laughs> yeah, I guess I thought they did a lot of that because it had been some time since the show had uh, had been making episodes on on television. And you know that's a, a small community of like Star Trek fans, and and they're trying to introduce everyone into it, into this wide release movie. It was very nineteen seventies. Yeah, I like, that. <laughs> it was very, very um, space odyssey. Um, I don't know. I can't remember when the when when two thousand one came out, but I was thinking there, sitting here thinking. That is very like sci fi 1970s. And this doesn't portray the movie at all. <laughs> the movie is very slow, like, like almost trance like slow. Yeah, it's kind of intellectual. Yeah. Uh -huh. They literally put all the action scenes of the movie in the trailer. Mm hmm. The pacing of the whole trailer was... I mean, first you have the random cool lightning bolts everywhere, and then suddenly, here's maybe one or two members of the crew, here's more cool lightning bolts in the front of a ship. Wait a minute, there might be a coherent bit in there about... Oh, wait, that almost hit an asteroid, so... <laughs> it, it, yeah, it made it look a lot more um, action-packed than it actually was, and it was... I remember it being... First time I saw it, I was so bored. It was so maniacally slow. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, for the people who don't know, the original plot of the first film, or the, the plot of the of the original first film, was the story of Vija, of Voyager becoming self-aware and having some of its letters burnt off the side, and go like, "My name is Vija," because letters went missing apparently. Uh, uh, space. Yeah, it's our space probe space. named itself at a fifth grade reading level. It's on Netflix, but not its own memory bank. Yeah, that that I didn't get any of that from the trailer, by the way. <laughs> I didn't get any of that from the trailer. Well, they did spoil it in the trailer by saying that you know it's a thinking machine from our past. Yeah, and they have the whole big thing right at the very beginning of it saying, Tra "Time to travel first, travel." to 300 years in the future which is it really 300 years in the future I thought it was a lot further than that uh, uh it's a little bit further than that we're talking four or five hundred their math is horrible uh, I think the original series is in the 
What, uh, 23rd century. century? Yeah. Oh, wait, nope. Oh, nope. Three, My math is horrible. Yeah, okay. I always thought it was much further on. I wonder if they kept that with the original, well, well not with, the, with the new ones, with the pine and the boring, and they're really fucking with it now. Yeah. <laughs> they've really <laughs> fucked with it now. It's getting to the point because. Because lens flares. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, I was actually thinking the, the new ones are actually true to the old ones because there was a lot of effects. Yeah, it was. I was, I was a lot of effects. <laughs> yeah, yeah was, you look at the trailer and like every shot. Uh, in it is one of the effects shots with the lightning bolts and the blurry warp effects and and all. I think they're showing off that they had some money to yeah. do yeah. effects. That's what they're doing with lens flare. Behold yeah. the power of our millions of dollars making lightning bolts. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I was quite surprised. They... I, was, I was quite surprised because I, I I didn't remember the first film being so special effect heavy, but then seeing the trailer is like, oh, oh god, it actually really it was, was a lot. Yeah, no, it wasn't that special effects heavy. That's the thing. Just like with the action scenes, they threw all the special effects into the trailer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. I remember there being that um, bit in the film, I think, of Spock going into, like, this cloud thing. That's the only thing that I remember. That's feature. Yeah, Yeah. that's literally the only thing I remember from that. um... Yeah, the... The main, the main thing that everyone always remembers, because it's the main bit that always gets parodied, is the probably the last twenty minutes when they find <laughs> out, oh, it's Vija uh-huh. and oh, look, it's Cyber Brains and all the sort of stuff and uh, da, 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 da. it's basically everyone, everyone only remembers the, the last twenty minutes because the, the the first part is just going, oh, look, it's Star Trek. Here's an introduction. It's like you already had two seasons. Do we really need an introduction? Here's um, a two-hour episode of Star Trek and maybe a plot twist at the end. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's just it. Like, it, it really sort of uh, mimicked a lot of the, the structure of the original series episodes. And they always did that, you know, technology, scary sort of thing with probes and computers and et cetera. But, like, that works on a TV show that lasts, you know, 40 minutes. But to stretch it into a whole movie, that's why, like, the last 20 minutes seems coherent because that's what you would have had for an episode. It yeah. had a lot. I remember the movie having a ton of padding. Like, mm-hmm. I get that they wanted to show off the effects because on the TV show, you didn't really get a lot of um, outside shots. I mean, it was incredible for what they what Gene did back in the sixties and 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 mm. and stuff. But it was so closed off. All you saw was in the ship, and then they went on sets. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. the whole. It's the whole sort of uh, Marvel, the the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Marvel Agents of Shield thing. You can tell that there's a very big difference in budget. Yeah. That, oh yeah. That, yeah. You have ABC with the stuff of maybe having a car fly through the air and someone going whoa, 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 whoa with their mind or something like that. <laughs> but then, but then with um, the Cinematic Universe, you have uh, Robert Downey Jr. flying through the air, getting punched by like Spider Man with Thor. Firing lightning from his asshole or something like that, and it's it's it's, it's 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 you can certainly tell that there is a very big difference of budget, and which is the quite incredible thing where it's uh it's well that one thing that never really seemed to change. Well, it's one I, thing when I, you I, have I get a... what they were trying to do. Don't get me wrong. I get that they were saying, "Wow, look, we have basically made these stations and these ships come alive," but. That might have been really awesome when you grew up in that time with that series and you were seeing that for the first time. But for me, I was just like, wow, that ship moves really slowly. That's yeah, it's, it's so slow. It's one thing to slow. have a wonderful budget and be able to work with it and do all kinds of things with it. But there's a difference between here's this amazing flick we've put out for you with our gigantic budget and look at the pretty lights. We spent all the money on those. So if Star Trek came out today, and I'm not talking about the new ones, I'm talking about the old the old one that we just watched, based on that trailer, would we go and see it? Based on this trailer? Yeah. Um, 
would I get to have a couple drinks first? <laughs> I would totally watch it based on that trailer. Based on what I know about the movie, no. But based on that trailer, I would watch it even if it came out today with those effects and everything. Yeah, I'm a huge nerd. You had me at Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, for me, I actually wouldn't see it. I think the trailer makes the film look really a bit boring. Yeah. It, it really does make... Cause it's because I have, I have seen the film, and it is nothing like the trailer. <laughs> Indeed. Is... I, looking at this trailer, I'm starting to wonder if I saw a bad advertisement for, I don't know, a lamp. I mean, there's plenty of shiny lights and lightning bolts, and maybe it's an action lamp. But would I want to buy that lamp? I don't think so. Especially when it comes attached with the journey through time and space. Yeah, well, just, the journey through time and space can does. happen with other things. I mean, they did it with a phone box. Yeah. yeah. But that was a blatant lie, I think. He clearly said in the trailer, as they go on an adventure through time and space, when did they time travel in the motion picture? The third one? No, no, no. no. The, the fourth one. This is true. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> right, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I think the only I think the only journey through time that we ever experience is in, let's face it, the last twenty minutes of the movie. Oh wait, isn't that Voyager? That thing is old. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I it just made me want to watch two thousand one. Yeah, it, that's it. I, I think that was one thing that I'd very much there's that 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 probably one reason why I thought the trailer looked kind of boring because it re it looked like a film that was really trying to be two thousand and one it was really trying to be that, and I think part of we were just going it's no no, no, why is it trying to be this if it's trying to be something else, then it's trying to cover up something it's it really is quite incredible that the trailer was that bad considering <laughs> that the film the film is actually really quite good. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, a, uh, it's, it's film, what now? Yeah, the, the, the film is actually kind. Of, it's actually pretty good. It's it's slow paced. It's slow paced, and it saves everything for the last twenty minutes. But it's not that bad. It's, it's not, yeah, uh, I I did sit there and watch it. I watched it for the specific reason of the um, transporter malfunctioned, and I actually wanted to see that happen. And they did it off screen. <laughs> Yeah. Well, they wasted it on all the lightning. They wasted the, the cool the lightning bolts. Feet. I'm telling you, <laughs> that's what you board. want to see this movie for. The cool <laughs> lightning bolts, <laughs> things flashing out of the front of what looks like some kind of weird space gun or quite possibly space washing machine. We don't even know. Does anybody even get shot in the movie? <laughs> Three Klingon ships. Uh, yeah, th those were those were torpedoes. Yeah. In this movie? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. VJ goes by and blows up three Klingon ships. No, I was talking about the Enterprise. The blow Enterprise blew up an asteroid. But yeah. they did it in uh, warp speed while entering some black hole anomaly malfunction thingy. Okay, right, that, you lost me. <laughs> uh, that might be the time travel because time actually moved slower when they were doing that. Yeah, they played it like I, I, I remember that scene. Oh. It was probably the God. That scene was terribly put together. <laughs> it's like that was actually put together. It's like <laughs> a second scene, but they play it at a quarter speed, so it's two minutes long. So you're seeing thirty seconds of action. Is that another where most of the action? One? Yeah, where most oh, of the no. action is them talking to each other, played out. Over two minutes, and they played in full. Well, now I'm sure. No, I'm sure not all of the action was just them talking to each other. I mean, there might have been a light that went off on the panel behind them. Yeah, <laughs> I love the bit in the in the trailer where they they put they have all this fantastic sci-fi stuff. You've got you've got um, the ships, big ships moving through the sky, slow but they're moving, and you've got. Things disappearing and lightning bolts and effects and out of nowhere there's this forced romantic plot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Uh, We're checking characters who we've never met before. Oh, I don't even know why you even bothered. You didn't call me that night six years ago. Because you guys aren't two new characters that we have no idea about because we're going to totally get that. And they spent so much introducing these two characters, one of which takes the third spot on the poster, mind you. And we even see the poster at the end of the trailer. Mm. Yes. As if they're going to be two new characters on the show, and they're both killed off at the end. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So much to introduce them. They are the main people of the movie. One of them even portrayed as the hero, as Kirk keeps fumbling up everything, and he's the one who has to save everyone because he actually knows what the Enterprise can do. I feel like he was supposed to be the everyman. You know how how Kirk is the everyman? Except in this movie where he's an arrogant prick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just to make Decker look good. Mm. And then they go and kill them off. Anyway. So, oh, it was in, the everyman until they let him into this movie and then he was William Shatner. In, 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 <laughs> in this film, do you get the feeling? Because I remember watching it. And I remember William Shatner being so passive aggressive. Like he was so like he just didn't want to do this. Yeah. Oh man. They forced me out of retirement for this. And then there's the oh <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll wait until we get to that one, but that that other film <laughs> where he takes the helm is just uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, we'll get there. I, how... We're, we're, we're loaded for bear on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do like Ilya's character, though. She doesn't take any shit at all. The first thing she does when she gets on the ship is to go to the bridge, walk right up to uh, Kirk, and say to his face, my vow of celibacy is on record. You ain't getting none of this. <laughs> <laughs> like, she knows she knows so much about the captain of the ship that she knows to tell him, you're not going to touch me. Yeah. I, oh, I know yeah, what you I do. Think, <laughs> I think part of that has but to do with... But what about the sham pagan? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> I think only I got that. <laughs> I didn't hear. It... I'm the oh. champagne. <laughs> uh, but I think Renegade. some of her like subtlety thing, subtlety bit has to do with like her. Didn't they introduce that uh, Deltons are so profoundly sexual that they have to take a celibacy oath to avoid hurting people they would mate? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they're never mentioned in the entire universe again. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's a, it's a throwaway species. Yeah. In the pandas Just, uh, of the universe. <laughs> they're here, they're pandering to 1970s culture, and yep. now they're gone. <laughs> and yet, in Star Trek Into Darkness, there was a half-naked lady. So much for empowerment. Man. They tried so hard in the first film. They made Ahura a badass. And in the second one... Oops. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Dude. Yeah. The series has come so far. And I think, and I, and I think with that, it might be time to move on to the next one <laughs> the the Star Trek 2 Wrath of K.A. the one uh, Moby Dick the movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah. those black heart I... yeah this I was... can't even finish it <laughs> yeah this was the one that inspired um no, no, not, uh, Into Darkness wasn't it yeah, yes Star Trek, yeah Star Trek Into yeah. Darkness one of the worst films I've ever seen um, ah, here we go. Here yeah. we go. Uh, Ooh, this is gonna be. This is here gonna, we go. This is gonna be some Jerry Springer stuff. <laughs> yeah, hold it's, me back. Yes, yeah, <laughs> Star, Star Trek. In, in Star Trek Into Darkness was absolutely bloody terrible. Star Trek, Ra Wrath of Khan is actually really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wrath of Khan is really good. Into, Into Darkness was a giant pile of shit. Into um, Darkness is Wrath of Khan, but they just basically. Flipped everything around. Yeah, I'm sorry, but Wrath of Mind Swamp into Darkness is Wrath of Kant. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
And I think with that, we're wow. going to go off and watch a trailer now. <laughs> and we're back from watching that one. And it certainly felt a lot more Star Trek-y than the other one. The other one just felt like trying to be 2001. This one actually felt like Star Trek. But... um. This one actually felt like Ricardo Montalban, the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll go with that. It's it was certainly it's it's from the way it presented, it certainly looked like um Khan was gonna be the lead character rather than anyone else yeah, in the Enterprise. I, I mean I mean you, you see you see them Paramount right there, you know, and then you get two full minutes of nothing but stars and talking about Khan and then suddenly Ricardo Montalban. Two minutes and thirty seconds of awesome. Yep. Uh, that is a trailer. That is a trick. Who wrote it? Gene Roddenberry did not write this film. Harv Bennett wrote it. Right. This is what another thing that I kind of I kind of like about Star Trek. And God bless him. Gene came up with everything. He worked very very hard to. But he had tunnel vision when it came to something. Gene wrote the first one. Mm-hmm. He is clear. Clearly, his fingerprints on the first film. On this, give it to somebody else, and they wrote Shakespeare. This film about a man trying to get revenge, and he was he was quoting poetry. It was literally quoting <laughs> Moby Dick. Yeah, there yes. was a bit in there where it, I got this film made me go and read Moby Dick. <laughs> yes, yeah. Moby Dick in space. <laughs> Maybe go and read Moby Dick. It was like this bit where um, one of the guys was saying, "No, we have to. No, I think we've gone far enough. We've got the ship. Let's go." And um, Khan turns around and says something like, um, "I'd strike the sun if it burnt me or some something." And I was like, "Ah, my <laughs> God! Oh my God!" If it's just oh. were a cannon, he would have shut his heart out upon it. Yeah. Oh. But that's... The trailer really pointed out, as he said before, this is Khan's movie. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. They put the emphasis on Khan, and they almost portrayed Kirk as the bad guy. Yeah. You know, with the introduction and the abuse of Lens Flare. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it was... For, yeah, well, very, very much the sort of thing. Just sees shadow while menacing words comes about how he is the destroyer of worlds. Yeah, yeah, it, it makes it made Kurt look like he was the villain. Despite Nimoy voicing over everything, not as Spock but as Nimoy voicing over everything, saying that Khan was this genetically modified horrible. Dictator, basically. You well, that's pretty it, much right, sure. Yeah, and then right after that, it flips over to Khan. Although they didn't, they didn't name him until the end of the trailer, so that's kind of a neat move. But, we uh, know, anything, Khan, but the um, people watching the trailer wouldn't know that. And he yeah. basically, and we don't see Kirk; we just see his silhouette. So it's easy to assume when you first see the trailer, if you haven't seen the movie, that well, Kirk that's... is Khan. The other thing is, um, I love how they did that right there at the beginning of the movie. They didn't assume everybody had come in straight from the original series, you know, knowing everything that they did about the Botany Bay and how Khan got accidentally woke up from cryosleep and all that. No, they just threw it out there that this guy's bad. Yeah. And he's mad. Mm-hmm. And he's going to blow stuff up. And Ricardo Maltabon does have such a great uh, presence. Oh, and, so oh, he cool. is presence, so man. I'm cool. telling you. And this trailer does everything it can to separate itself from the last movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, everything's it, different in this trailer. Yeah, it sounded a lot more colorful as well. The other one was very uh-huh. blue, and, and this one's got a lot of orange, a lot of brightness, a lot of vibrance. It's very eighties. It. It's very action packed. It was like I've never seen a more intense button press. <laughs> yeah. Button yeah. press commit. Yeah, Teen Titan Go, come on, telly, and I don't want to watch it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. 
comes across that this is a 1980s action film, even if it's Star Trek, it's a 1980s action film. Things are blowing up. People are getting dynamic. Everybody's yelling and screaming or quite possibly quoting Moby Dick about something. It's, yeah, it's it's certainly the sort of film that really went with the whole sort of 80s action vibe, but really tried to keep its highbrow sort of nature. Yeah, which is, which is so a very weird. interesting mi- mix, and this is probably the reason why everyone likes this movie probably most out of, uh, well, out of the original set at least. Oh yeah, oh yeah, easily. Memorable and so quotable, so quotable. Um, yes. you know, the fact that he, there was a planet getting blown up, I was like, hell yeah. Phaser comes out. Two, yeah. two. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you assume it's getting blown up from the trailer. Yeah. Somebody did something and a planet's getting blown up. I'm gonna go watch that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. Although the one thing that I remember is that that graphic came back in uh, uh, the, the, the search for Spock, so they must have spent a bunch of money on it and they wanted to get the yeah. money, they wanted to get the money's worth, <laughs> so they just started reusing it. Yeah. So they so they got rid of everything from the last film except the urge to spend more money. <laughs> hey, it's still Gene Roddenberry. And Gene Roddenberry, a story writer. Although he's co-credited because he wrote Space Siege. So in a way, he is part of the writer because he wrote all of the characters. Yeah. But the story was written by Harv Bennett. Yeah. Is it me? All right. Now, now let, me, let me... Correct me if I'm wrong, but if you look at Star Trek from the original series to, like... Up until like Voyager Enterprise, do you think that the best stories that come out of that series, those series, are written by people who are not Gene Roddenberry? Like, no disrespect to the guy, he, he had a vision and he worked really, really, really hard to make it come true, but. Sometimes I feel like he, he just had... When you hear stories about him, he just had tunnel vision. Like, that 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 need, that need, that ambition to get... That drive to get the show sorted and up and running and out every single time meant that he had, like, one solitary goal and he would just not move from that goal. Like, the story was this, 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 and this. From a lot that I've heard about Gene is that he was he, he was a sort of person that was very good at creating worlds and creating the world of Star Trek and and uh, and kind of coming up with the characters as well but plot like actual like episode plot and movie plot was never really his strong point he was he was a very sort of creative creatively minded in the sense of he liked that, that oh, he was good at making things, but not necessarily doing stories. Yeah, it, it, what I've read about Gene and what I can gather from reading all that is that this was his baby. The concept of Star Trek was his baby. The fact that they were actually going through space in a ship like this and going to specific worlds and you know the whole meeting new life and new civilizations, that was the concept of it, and Gene was very oriented about that concept but apart from that uh getting back to what kenny was saying uh when you look at the shows you've got the original series and then a l- about a little over half of next generation i think that he had his hand in not necessarily as a uh, writer all the time i know a lot of the stuff in uh, next generation even wasn't his writing but uh yeah, there is definitely a difference between when you know for a fact that he's the one behind the entirety of what's going on on that screen and when he's not. For this trailer, I just remembered it again. It was the first point I was going to make when I opened my mouth the first time. Uh, they discovered in this trailer, when they did this trailer, that Leonard Nimoy has the perfect trailer voice. Uh-huh. And yeah. they had him read the trailer... And after that, he's done every t- voiceover job for Star Trek up until his death. <laughs> now, he even does the voiceover in Star Trek Online. Very true. For everything. Not necessarily oh, yeah. everything, 
but he does do enough to give Federation players pretty much the entire story of what's going on up until they know what they're doing. Yeah. There is an info box that's in the description even says it's Spock's recordings. So you get all information uh-huh. as Spock telling it back to you. So whenever you discover something new, Leonard Nimoy comes on and explains what it is. Mm. Hi, I'm Leonard Nimoy. I was, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, surprised. Spock. I was surprised in the trailer when uh, um, they put the con line in the trailer, like the most recognized line of of Star Trek, like across the board, uh, mm-hmm. is in this trailer for the movie. As if they knew that was going to be so iconic. They even did it with oh, yeah. the Echo. Uh, yeah, the they, they they did it literally. They just pulled it right there and let it run exactly as it was. Mm-hmm. Did anyone else, when it started echoing, think it was going to turn into dubstep? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been very impressive considering it was 82. Yeah. yeah. So, if you saw that trailer now, would you go and see it just based on the trailer? It looks way better than the first one, so I probably would. It looks it looks way better. Awesome. It's, it looks it looks a lot more fun because the uh-huh. the other one, the first one, just looked really boring and really blue and grey. This one's vibrant and fun. I'll I'll agree there. Uh, again, nineteen eighties action flick. What can what can you possibly do wrong about those? Well, right. don't don't actually answer that. But <laughs> it, it it's one of those that draws you in, and it actually says this is going to be full of action and this time we're not skimping out on it so have fun with it Mm. so yeah absolutely I would go see that it says this is full of action but it's also really intelligent Uh and that's what drew me in that they mixed it so perfectly in the trailer what caught me was when that guy got shot and you literally see him it looks like he disintegrates in front of your eyes his hands are up you see sparks fly in, you see the smoke, and then he like disappears from the screen. Mm-hmm. When they uh, when they give that tagline at the end of the universe lies the beginning. Oh man, I'm sold. Like I'm there. Yeah. Like that does it. And so I think with that, it's probably time to move on to the pretty much the direct sequel, the uh, the search for Spock. William Shatner it's... in the quest for more money. <laughs> yeah, Star Trek Spock Spock and the Spock of the Spock Spock. Um, <laughs> that's basically what this entire thing is. It's just going. It's Spock Spock of the Spock Spock of the cheapening first film. Um, yeah, and and uh, somehow they stop. They snuck Christopher Lloyd into it. Yeah, I I didn't know that. I didn't because I, I didn't realize it because I what I barely watched. It. I watched bits of it. And then, and then I realized Christopher Lloyd was in it. was like, okay, that's quite impressive. And then he pulls out Klingon. It's like, that's impressive. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> Things that'll blow your mind. Mm-hmm. He so was this... frozen today. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, this was his first sci-fi. The second sci-fi he was in, or space sci-fi he was in, was... What was it called? I think Space Commando with Hulk yeah, Hogan. <laughs> oh god, that was he a was frozen today. <laughs> that 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 must have been a change of pace. Yeah, because uh, when did um, uh, Back to the Future come out? Was that eighty four? Eighty five. Eighty five. Eighty five. Eighty five. Yeah, because it's always yeah. five in the years. Yeah, would have been the year after this, because this came out in '84. So, yep. Christopher Lloyd wouldn't become a big, big household name, or at least a big household name in the areas of sci-fi until the until the year after. Mm-hmm. That's mm, right. And not a bad film to start with. Yeah, 
Yeah, too bad it cheapens the ending of the second one, I suppose. Ooh, ooh. I feel, I feel <laughs> like this is going to be coming back in another franchise that recently started. Cough, cough, DC, cough, cough, Batman vs. Superman. Cough, cough, it already uh, happened in the 1990s, here we go. cough. Here we go. <laughs> Cough, cough, it already happened in the 1990s, cough, yes, cough, it's called the death you. of Superman. It, it did happen, we're all just waiting for it, we're just waiting to yeah. see how badly they butcher it. Yeah, oh, we're not here to talk for... about comic oh. books, are we? Yeah. I'm waiting for mullet <laughs> Superman, <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> mullet, <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, super mullet. <laughs> <laughs> With this oh. mighty invincible hair! <laughs> well, let's go and search for Spock, shall we? All right. Spock! Yeah. And we're back from watching that one. The Spock Spock of Spock Spock. That actually had very little Spock. It's... <laughs> I, uh, what? It kind of had very little of anything. It, it did. It did. I mean, didn't didn't we just watch this trailer a little while ago? Uh, yeah. That's how I felt. Yeah. But no, the adventure continues with the same crap you've seen over and over and over again. The... The main thing that I the, oh. the main thing that I got from this one was uh, Star Trek work casual. <laughs> what? <laughs> Kirk is a rebel. Deal with it. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm sorry. I was like, who? What are you turn? <laughs> they were like, all right. We start off on the gate. That's awesome. Okay, good. We started. You get to pass the first one because you're the first. Second, right out the bat, good, fantastic. Third, yeah. well, uh, there is a bit of a backstory to the third film. It was the very. The fact that Leonard Nimoy did not want to do it. It was very directed by Nimoy. To begin with, because all it was supposed to be was about the search for Spock. And then comes some executive meddling in it, where they said, this is the 80s, you can't do that. You have to have action. People won't watch it unless it has action. (laughs) So they threw in the Klingon plotline just to add some action to the film. Which really is a throwaway plot. This trailer... Clearly you go to Christopher Lloyd when you think action. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) This trailer only showed the Klingon stuff and showed nothing and didn't even mention the search for Spock stuff. So they, again, like the first one, they well, only showed the action bits in the trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a search yeah. for Spock with well, no in fact, Spock. It was, yeah, it was supposed to be like a, a big, huge thing, you know, for the Enterprise to be destroyed in the movie because it's, you know, the whole Star mm-hmm. Trek franchise is centered around the ship. But Wasn't then they destroyed like. They put that right in the trailer. Ton of time. <laughs> Yeah, well, Enterprise well, has been destroyed yeah. twice and decommissioned well, once. Yeah, yeah. I like how they it said was the first one. I like how they said join the Enterprise on its final mission. <laughs> and then yes. The shows the adventure continues. Yeah. <laughs> like he was literally. Only saying, three more movies. This is the final <laughs> one. Star Trek Three. We lied. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's po- that's probably the best way to sort of summarize this one is Star Trek Three. We lied. Yep. It's, <laughs> also, it's like, Star Trek Three. Spock's dead. It's like, oh, we're we the Enterprise. Word in the trailer. It sounded like fuck. Yeah. <laughs> one word that it sounded like fuck. It yeah. Like, yeah, it just ah. <laughs> we don't need three movies to we don't need three movies to cover that in Star Trek. We have Kirk. <laughs> And then the line in which they say, someone is stealing the Enterprise, I literally thought, fuck. And says it exactly the same time as I thought it. Uh, Sometimes the turns to the camera, stares into the camera and says it as well. <laughs> Dramatic, just looking into the camera going, fuck. <laughs> just with Brooke Brown in Klingon makeup, basically. Yeah. Yeah, just, it's, it's going, yeah, Chris, just, sw- just swear 
just just look straight into the camera and grunt. <laughs> Is that all right? <laughs> just, no, more gravelly. <laughs> all right, there we go. <laughs> go on. Bones is standing here going, I cannot believe this shit. <laughs> the whole movie is pretty much Bones going, why am I here? <laughs> Poor Bones, man. Yeah. Poor Bones. And, and, and Federation Security must be crap. Federation Security really must be crap considering the whole sort of, like, like the the second movie was about sort of Federation stuff going missing and stuff getting nicked. Now this one, the Enterprise is off getting nicked. It's going bloody hell. The actual port yeah. security for, for the Federation really must be shit. Yeah, but no, no, no. The real the real metric is pretty much just right after Sulu shows up to, to do his part and pretty much just ends with, don't call me tiny. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad Federation yeah. security is. Although there was one thing that uh, CinemaSins, uh, uh, the CinemaSins YouTube channel pointed out is that you have the five of them just show up uh, on the ship. It's like, oh yes, we're taking this ship. Yeah, only the five of us. Just like, wait, hang on, it. Five people can run a starship. Why do you I have like a hundred people? Um, other two thousand people that are required to run the starship. Yes. Yeah, yeah, um, like, if five people can <laughs> run it, then why the, fuck <clears throat> the hell do you need like a hundred or so other people to run the ship? They're other just extras. They're just sitting around twiddling their thumbs, waiting for people to die so they can fill new yeah. seats. Uh huh. You know, I just realized this. This is the one where they finally realized it was a bad idea to spend money. Yeah, <laughs> there's nobody on the ship. The lights are off. God forbid they open a door. That might actually cost five bucks. Uh, yeah, this must have been the cheapest one to produce because most of it is work casual and as little cost as possible. <laughs> as, 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 they weren't even in as, costume. They were wearing their everyday clothes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they just showed up on the set and went, "All right." Where's our costumes? You don't have any. Yeah. Okay, what are we going to wear? You're mm. wearing it. Yeah. <laughs> Where is Leonard Nimoy? <laughs> um, Bones, he's in your head. Can you pretend that you're having thoughts in your Can head? Can you pretend you're Nimoy? <laughs> you know, that's the impression you did of Nimoy <laughs> at the last company party. Just do that for the entire movie. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, Bones. You're crazy now. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> that that must have been really fun, considering Nimoy was the director of the movie. It's like, <laughs> yay, time to have Bones do an impression yeah. of Nimoy while being directed by Nimoy. That must have been fun. <laughs> yes, because clearly that's the best possible chemistry for the plot of the movie. <laughs> all right. Last year, Don't they hate each other? Uh, right, I think I all wrote. of them hate each other before, now. Before. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> This this movie is called Fuck You Bones the movie. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. pretty much we lied about the last movie and yeah. Bones is crazy and everything is gonna get turned on its head. Have fun trying to watch this coherently. We're gonna go have a smoke. I always thought that in the dynamic of Kirk, um, Spock, and Bones. Bones was that friend who is your friend, but not really. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You know how how you, you've got uh, um, Kirk and Spock are really really close, and they go out shopping together. And you know when when they have a problem, each of them have a problem. They call each other, and there's just Bones that's saying, "Hey guys, I'm here too," and they're like, "Yeah." How about Actually, I, I kind of feel like Bones is more the guy who shows up and steals the beer from the fridge and just stands around. Yeah, for me, Bones in sort of the I, three of them, you have Bones to me was more like Kiff, where where where, <laughs> where 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 he's just the where he's just you have Kirk and uh, Kirk and Spark sort of oh yeah uh, yeah, and you have Bones just going. Uh. <laughs> Uh, I, Bones, I, like I have he's a lot extremely like, uh... sensual learning disorder. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I love um, Carl Urban as Bones in the new movie because he's cynical as fuck. Yes. <laughs> That's how Bones fuck. is supposed to be. He's the guy who doesn't care. He is in the new movie, not yeah. the third wheel, because yeah. you don't give a shit. 
Yeah, he'll it's... literally say, Kirk will say, come, come, let's go, let's go, um, let's go steal this ship. And Carl Urban is like, dude, I had a wife, I was divorced. <laughs> no. Yeah. He, he's like, he's like Kevin Didn't... Hart. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm yeah. happy. Yeah, know it's Urban I turning to Pine and going, through. "You're a fucking idiot." <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 going. The whole new part of the franchise has really cemented the whole bo- burn, uh, Bones Kirk relationship because it's Bones turning to Kirk and going, "You are re- you really are a fucking idiot." <laughs> you are. <laughs> it's, going, it's like we should do this. Oh, for fuck's sake! Uh, no, no, we're not doing that. That's really dumb. <laughs> Do you want to die? No, we're not doing yeah. it. You bloody idiot! Yeah. Bones is the guy who really doesn't want to be there at, a, at any point in time. He, he, he's just there for the ride. He's just like, ah, I'm just here for the paycheck. Why are you making me do stuff? I, I think there's a bit in the first film where um, you meet Bones for the first time. And I think Kirk was trying to get him to do something, and Bones is like, "No, I'm gonna go get a drink. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the bar. <laughs> Fuck you." And then he goes and finds Spock. Hmm. Yeah, he's like, "I'm a doctor, not an actor." Not a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Damn it, Jim. Just... Yeah, it just it just reminds me of one of the uh, old Star Trek parody songs. It's like I'm a doctor, not an actor, not a not a milkman. <laughs> I'm sorry, he's dead, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh, that's yeah. This one is probably brutal thing in this film, though. Yeah, I and don't it, get why it is, that... but they introduced this character, saying that oh. Her and Kirk was goody goody back in the days. Introduces that Kirk has a son, and then goes and kills him off. You think something like that would humble a person? <laughs> really humble Kirk. Right. <laughs> this is Kirk. <laughs> What's humble? <laughs> Mildly annoyed. <him. laughs> yeah. It's like Kirk. Kirk. What would humble Kirk? Kirk has had every space herp he could ever get. <laughs> Kirk has had Jonah all Kirk, of the space her. Like what, thirty something years old? You should have watched it. His son dies at the end. <laughs> 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 he's yeah. like, you think he? You think he? I think he just went and um, got revenge because it appeased the lady. I think in the back of his head he was going, "Phew, I don't have to play child support or yes. a perfect payment of child support." I think yes. this is how the conversation went. Uh, Kirk, you know, we were together a while back, yeah? Um, I sort of got pregnant. Uh, can't you do an abortion? Uh, <laughs> and that. Uh, where's the nurse Klingon? I can piss <laughs> Yeah, he does piss the Klingon off for no yeah. reason. Yeah, that, so... That's how reason Christopher Lloyd Klingon did this was because Kirk killed his dog. <laughs> And he's like, he's like, you killed my dog, so I will kill your son. Okay, fair trade. I probably have half a dozen somewhere. <laughs> I, I probably have half a dozen somewhere yeah, else in some every people. corner of the galaxy. It's not really much point. I've been, I've been spawning with every race I've met for about twenty years. I don't care. <laughs> this is why I'm I love that we've come like back to it's in the Orion or something. <laughs> This, this is why I love that we've come back to the other movies first, because this one, it's like we're seeing both of the other trailers we just saw at the same time. Because <laughs> I think we'll leave it at that for now, because we're pretty much only only really going to be talking about the next ones from, from, from this point onwards, because Surface Pocket's fucking dumb. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be saved for... The next episode next week, because this is a month-long thing of Star Trek Timber. You had to make it the most hardest thing for me to say, did, didn't you? Star Trek Timber. Star Trek Timber. Yeah. It's too many like T's. Star Trek Timber. Star Trek Timber. Only going where no fun except like gone before. Look, what you remember is any time you want to cut down a Star Trek tree, you first yell Star Trek Timber. Because the track was too hard to say. 
Uh, I can see okay. more fans hey, coming a, along over the... Bloody call it Star Trekking. Star Trekking. Uh-huh. Oh, don't don't we come in peace. Shoot to kill. Shoot to kill. Shoot kill. Shoot to kill. <laughs> and hey, at least I'm not putting you guys through the painfulness that is the fan-made films. Uh, yeah. Uh, Oh, I saw. Whoa, whoa, had a palpitation there. Sorry. We, we're doing Star Trek September all the way through September. Every Sunday you will have a new episode of talking about the Star Trek. Not sure why September, but hey ho. Because it's the 50th what, what, what anniversary it? of Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 50th anniversary yeah. this year. Yeah, man. Yeah, the, yeah, the, <laughs> 50th, that's the 50th awesome. anniversary. Oh, and when does the TV series because come out? People Next think year. It's in February. That's when it's originally aired. No, nobody first... gives a crap about that old episode that nobody saw that had an old guy, <laughs> a, another guy as 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 Kirk. We want the the, the actual Kirk, one. Was what the cage? Pike. Who? Christopher Pike. Uh-huh. What? Yeah, well, that was no, no, no. The cage was uh, Robert April. Hmm. Wasn't it? Cage. Yeah, that one. Christopher Pike, the original captain of the Enterprise. So why don't we start with Christopher Pike? Because nobody counts that episode because it bombed so hard that they actually thought of uh, booting Roddenberry from the studio completely. Okay, let's put, let's well, put it this way. Himself, we're starting with the actual one, not the one that people don't like. <laughs> okay. No, let's put it this way. They used it later in uh, another original series episode. You thought this third movie had no budget. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh boy Almost the entirety of that pilot episode took place in a glass cage maybe that's why it was called cage it's called the menagerie what well the writing was after the day off didn't okay. they it's a menagerie for <laughs> aliens and since he is a human, he's alien to the people on the planet. Okay. So, menagerie. I'm confused, but okay. Basically uh, means... So... Yeah. So, Star so... Trek is the 50th anniversary of Star Trek. What? Yarp. It's a good time. <laughs> We're excited. Yeah, so we're going to be doing more trailers as the month goes on. Uh, it is, well, if you like the episode, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it round. It's always good. We like actually having people watch. Um, and yeah, it is goodbye from me. Goodbye. It's goodbye from the usual Kenny and Chris. Goodbye. Bye. And it is goodbye from our special guests, Art and Mitch. It's been a pleasure. Having fun. Goodbye. Bye. Yep, and we're all going to be back next week with more Star Trek trailers.